New York One Zone, Dean Meminger. Hello. Yes, sir. Good morning, everyone. Dean Meminger, New York One. You've been on the scene uh, dealing with the Eric Garner case since day one. So you know the ins and outs of how the prosecutor handled this. Uh, but how do you feel today? What What was your emotion when the verdict came down yesterday? Well, one, yeah, it wasn't a verdict because, remember, I just want to be clear, grand jury is only looking at the situation to find out if there is enough evidence to Got even go to a trial. So, so how, how, did you trial. Look, how did you look yeah. at the results of the indictment? Well, no indictment by this grand jury. I guess a lot of people are wondering, well, what evidence, what testimony, what witnesses did the grand jury hear from? Because you heard yesterday, uh, Eric Garner's mom said with the Reverend Al Shops, and she wanted to know, well, what video did they see? What video did the grand jury see? Because everybody saw uh, the video of Officer Daniel Pantaleo putting Eric Garner in a chokehold. The medical examiner ruled that Eric Garner died because of a chokehold mm-hmm. along with his asthma and obesity. So, you know, when you when you see this, you say, well, really what happened? And when it comes to a grand jury, you're inside a courtroom, but there is no judge. It's just the prosecutor. The prosecutor runs the show. Wow. So there's an old saying that if a prosecutor or a district attorney wants to indict a ham sandwich, they can. Right. So now, let me, Dean, Dean, let me stop you right there for the audience. And I've been saying this all morning. Prosecutors are put in office by voters. They represent the communities, the constituency that they represent is that borough of Staten Island. Go ahead. Continue on, Dean. Now, and that is important. When I speak to prosecutors and defense attorneys, they point that out all the time. Demographically, it depends on where you are. If you're in Brooklyn, if you're in the Bronx, you're in Staten Island, in Newark, you know, it, it depends on who's there. Now, we are hearing reports this morning that there are 23 grand jurors. It was a breakdown of 14 whites and nine people of color. So, I mean, that's somewhat of a fair breakdown. Ding, ding, racial, ding, racially, ding, but ding, we don't ding, know what their ding, sentiments were for police. Ding, ding. We have to be honest about what Staten Island is, though. It's a very small community, okay? And there is a large divide between the haves and have-nots on Staten Island. There's also, everyone knows each other. And a majority, uh, well, a lot, let me not say a majority, but a lot of police live on Staten Island. And then there's also a lot of people who have criminal records who can't vote and aren't registered to vote. So think about the voting population of Staten Island that this prosecutor is beholden to. And, it, yeah, and a lot of people will, will point that out, you know, that there are a lot of Republicans that live there. So you have to look at the political makeup, as you are pointing out. But the bigger issue is, well, what were they told? What did they hear? Because sometimes when you're in that grand jury, you go by the evidence. And sometimes there's only limited evidence that you're given. And also, what part of the law were you told? So normally you can't get grand jury proceeding information, not in New York. It is against the law. It is illegal for the prosecutor or witnesses to come out and say what happened in a grand jury in New York City. So let me take you somewhere Uh, real quick, Dean, for the audience. I believe that this prosecutor went to grand jury because, and the same thing happened in Ferguson, because prosecutors have great relationships with the police. And a prosecutor's conviction rate And the crime rate are directly related to the relationship between the police and and, and the prosecutor. And because of that, you know, obviously the chief of police, the mayor, they want the crime rate to be down. Prosecutors want their conviction rate to be high because it looks good on their resume. It also looks looks good to taxpaying citizens and helps them get reelected, helps them get better donations. So that relationship is very muddled. So this prosecutor sorting and deciding to do a grand jury instead of directly prosecuting the police officer or officers, because I'm also told, Dean Memager, that the prosecutor gave immunity to the other officers that were involved. Yeah, we heard that that there was some immunity to the folks, so we don't know what that is. So you're right. Even on, you know, on Twitter, people are hitting me with that. You know, asking these questions. So the one important thing in Ferguson, they were able to release the information from the grand jury. New York, they cannot. But D.A. Dan Donovan out of Staten Island says he has asked the court system in New York, can he release some of this information to the public? 
if that happens, it's a small chance it can happen, but if that happens, then we can get a closer look at what really went on during those grand jury proceedings, which, you know, took several months. And that's the other issue that people are questioning. Why did it take so long? How much information did you give them when in most cases you don't lay out a whole case because it's not a trial. It's really just a grand jury proceeding. Now, I, we also had a conversation. I had a conversation with some people from Staten Island. Appreciate all of y'all calling in. I want to, you know, the understanding the demographics for the world and whoever can hear my voice right now. We have people listening all around the country. Understanding that Staten Island is different than most of New York City is very important here. It's also understanding that that particular neighborhood where Eric Garner died, where he lived and died, is prime real estate. In the video, you're watching Eric Garner tell the police, why are you messing with me every day? Right. Everyone talks about Eric Garner. He used to be outside every day. He was he was out hanging out in the community. There was a fight there earlier that, that day. That he broke up. That yes. he broke up. So on and so forth. I believe that the pressure that police put on these communities to that they're trying to make people that live there or have lived there uncomfortable and force them to leave was a part of why this got escalated so quickly. It's a part of why there was such a relationship between those police officers and Eric Garner and ultimately resulted in someone dying. It's because they're, what is it called, Dean? A broken window? The broken window theory under the former police commissioner, Ray Kelly, a lot of people said it was stop and frisk. Those who criticize the police department now say it's Bill Bratton's broken windows theory, meaning you go after quality of crime, quality of life crimes, small issues that you go after. Quality but, of life crimes, ladies and ladies and gentlemen. Just the title itself I don't says it. to me, taxpaying people who don't want people hanging out outside on yeah. their block. These individuals are ruining my quality of life. They are messing up my property value. Wow. I'm a taxpaying citizen, and I want these individuals gone. Yeah, one of the issues that, you know, the mayor, you know, has spoken about, but others as well, is that, you know, they have to look at these issues, the community police relationships, try to make them better. But the other side of the token, and you guys have spoken about this a little bit as well when it comes to the quality of life. You know, people in the communities, whether black or Latino, have to look at some of the issues that they face as young people committing a lot of crimes. And then when the cops come in, there become these issues that people face. So if you, yesterday you had the mayor, you had the president, you had the attorney general talking about these issues and saying the attorney general and the U.S. attorney in Brooklyn who oversees that now that yes, they're going to do their own investigation now that New York State is not moving forward, the feds are going to at least investigate now. And that's a whole different ballgame, whole different set of laws when you look at federal civil rights violations.